In this lesson, we're going to learn specifically how to assess the left atrial appendage on transesophageal echo. Now, we're going to begin with the midesophageal two-chamber view with the left atrium, the mitral valve, and left ventricle. And you can just see the left atrial appendage at the edge of the screen here. Now, the anatomy of the left atrial appendage is quite variable. And so the transducer angle at which it is best seen can be quite variable too. Nonetheless, the common feature of all the left atrial appendage views is that they're obtained at the mid-esophageal level. Now, I'd suggest that you start your search for the left atrial appendage with a transducer imaging plane angle of approximately 90 degrees. Somewhere in the region of 90 to 110 degrees will usually be a good starting point for your search. An imaging plane angle of approximately 90 degrees will give us a two-chamber view of the heart of the left atrium, mitral valve and left ventricle. And we can just see the left atrial appendage coming into view at the edge of the sector. Now in order to optimise the view, make sure that your focus position is centred on the left atrial appendage and also start to turn the probe so that we swing across the sector and start to bring the left atrial appendage towards the centre of the sector. That will give us a slightly more centred view like this one and also reduce the depth of the sector so that we enlarge the appearance of the appendage on the screen. And in this view we can start to appreciate the full extent of the appendage but do remember that it can be a multi-lobed structure up to five lobes have been identified at autopsy, and so we will need to assess the appendage in multiple imaging planes to make sure that we've seen every part of it. When we're looking at the appendage, look carefully for any evidence of thrombus or indeed any spontaneous echo contrast in the left atrium or in the appendage itself. Be careful not to mistake small pectinate muscles which are small ridge-like muscles around the edges of the appendage for thrombus. Here we've adjusted the transducer plane angle. It's now at 75 degrees. And we should always freely adjust the angle, firstly to inspect the appendage in multiple planes, but also to ensure that we've opened up the appendage as best we can to avoid foreshortening. Again, you can just appreciate some pectinate muscles within the appendage itself in this image. Adjacent to the appendage, we have the left upper pulmonary vein. And in between the two, we have the posterolateral ridge, which is sometimes known as the ligament or fold of Marshall. It's also been known as the warfarin ridge because some people have mistaken this for thrombus and incorrectly recommended anticoagulation with warfarin. Again, we can adjust the depth of the imaging sector to really maximise the size of the left atrial appendage on the screen to ensure that we've inspected it very thoroughly. When we really zoom in on the left atrial appendage, we can start to appreciate the anatomy, not just of the appendage, but also a postural lateral ridge. And we can see that the ridge itself has a rather bulbous end to it. And this has given it the common nickname of the Q-tip sign, because the postural lateral ridge looks a little like the end of a Q-tip. When we assess the left atrial appendage in multiple views, we should aim to obtain at least two orthogonal views. In other words, two views at approximately 90 degrees to each other. So here's one view obtained at 48 degrees, which clearly shows the left atrial appendage. And then here's the orthogonal view obtained at 138 degrees, which shows the same appendage, but at a 90 degree orthogonal plane. And in this particular view, we can very clearly see the pectinate muscles along the edge of the appendage. Again, be careful not to mistake these for thrombus. Once we've assessed the anatomy of the left atrial appendage, we should apply colour Doppler. And this can help us to assess the full extent of the appendage. The presence of colour within the appendage makes it more easy to see exactly how far it extends. 
We should also perform pulsed wave Doppler to measure the emptying velocities of the appendage. And to do this, we should place the pulsed wave Doppler sample volume approximately one centimetre inside the orifice of the appendage. In this case, the emptying velocity is 0.8 metres per second. Now, low appendage emptying velocities below 0.2 metres per second are associated with an increased risk of thrombus and embolism, whereas normal emptying velocities greater than 0.4 metres per second indicate a higher chance of sustaining sinus rhythm after cardioversion for atrial fibrillation. In our assessment of the left atrium and its appendage, we should always look out for the presence of spontaneous echo contrast, this swirling, smoke-like appearance in the left atrium, which is consistent with a prothrombotic state. The presence of spontaneous echo contrast is associated with a higher risk of thromboembolic events. And this spontaneous contrast can extend into the left atrial appendage itself, and in this case, a patient with mitral stenosis, we're seeing not just spontaneous echo contrast in the left atrium and the appendage, but also layers of thrombus which have built up within the appendage itself. So I hope you liked this video. It was taken from our CME accredited TE Essentials course. Absolutely make sure to check it out and to register for a free trial account, which will give you access to selected lessons in the course. If you want to learn how Med Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Med Mastery video. So take care and I talk to you soon.